All right, uh, it's time for our keynote panel. If I could have Peter and Nisha and uh, Robert join me on the stage, we'll get started with that. Um, while we're waiting for them, um, quick show of hands, how many people consider themselves uh, familiar with OpenStack? Okay, how many people would like to know more about OpenStack? I feel a little smarter on it. Okay, good, good. Lots of content this week, so uh, we'll have uh, Boris Rinsky talking specifically about OpenStack tomorrow in the keynote also, so hopefully we can all get uh, a little smarter about it. Okay, so our topic today is uh, the future of operating MySQL at scale, and uh, I have a number of questions for our panel. I'll ask them to uh, answer the uh, question, each one, uh, each one of them to answer the questions. Before we do that, though, I'd like to, um, first of all, welcome them all, and uh, just go down the line here, and if you could introduce yourself and say a little bit about your company, whatever you haven't had a chance to cover yet, uh, um, that would be a good start. Peter? Hey, uh, so my name is Peter Zaitsev. I'm CEO of Pircona. You probably haven't heard about us. Uh, we do uh, things with MySQL, like support consulting, remote DBA. Okay, Nisha? Uh, yes, uh, I'm Nisha Talagala. I spoke 30 minutes ago, so <laughs> you should probably know. Um, so Fusion.io uh, builds, you know, uh, products involving flash and non-volatile memories. We do, you know, flash devices, system software, uh, appliances, things like that. My name is Robert Hodges. I'm CEO of Continuant. We do clustering and replication for MySQL and other fine databases. And we have a great sofa in our booth, so please stop by and visit. Okay, good. So uh, first question today is, uh, what do you think is the greatest misperception about operating MySQL at scale? Robert, why don't we start with you and we'll come this way. Uh, sure, I think the, the, probably the biggest in my opinion is that somehow MySQL cannot scale. And um, if you look back, a few years ago, there were all these articles about how transactions were too expensive. Uh, Mike Stonebreaker wrote a pretty famous one. Um, it, and there was a notion that, you know, relational databases in general and databases like me, MySQL in particular just couldn't scale to the kind of levels of data, levels of transaction processing necessary um, in this age of very large quantities of data. And that's simply not true. I think that underestimated the fact that, first of all, MySQL would change, it's a moving target. And I think it also considerably underestimated the effect of technology like the uh, storage that Nisha was just talking about. Okay, Nisha? Yes. Um, so I, th I mean, I'm not sure what the you know, biggest misconception is, but I, you know, I agree, Roger, that um, basically, um, I mean, I think as, you know, data, particularly as, you know, data center infrastructure scales substantially, you know, people are always finding, you know, new things that they can do to make the infrastructure more efficient and things like that. And I think MySQL has done a lot in the last few years, you know, to adapt to new technologies, adapt to the scale of deployments and so forth. So it looks really good. Okay, Peter? Yeah. Uh, I believe the greatest misconception is uh, a search for uh, the silver bullet which will make uh, running MySQL on uh, extreme scale e easy and kind of off the shelf. I believe what uh, running MySQL on extreme scale, as guys at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn are uh, doing, is hard, and that requires a lot of uh, uh, discipline and a lot of skill uh, in the team to do so. And frankly, I will continue. Uh, this will be so, and much by definition, because those guys are continue to push the boundaries by making MySQL uh, is uh, running uh, as efficient as it co possibly can be. At the same time, I see a lot of uh, improvements right now in the hardware and uh, in software, which make MySQL uh, running on the uh, maybe medium uh, and small scale a lot more efficient and easy and fun than it was ever before. Okay, good. Um, so next question, what do you see as the greatest barriers to scaling up MySQL, and how will those barriers be addressed by your company or others? Nisha, if you'd like to go first. Uh, sure, so um, I think, you know, maybe kind of, you know, starting from, you know, more of the storage side, which is kind of what we do. Um, I think a lot of, you know, some of the things that I covered in the talk all, you know, earlier this morning are the capabilities that are coming in the infrastructure are very substantial. 
and they are somewhat, you know, kind of different from what has been there before. So, you know, it, it, it is in, in order to get the most efficiency and then by in, in turn the most scale, you really want to be able to adapt to those capabilities. Some of them imply greater parallelism, some of them imply, you know, more awareness, you know, some imply just more efficiency at the software level. But, you know, some of the work that we've done with our partners have done shows, you know, what you can achieve if you kind of become aware of the infrastructure changes that are coming and, you know, learn how to adapt and optimize and exploit them. Okay, Peter? Well, I would look at uh, challenges from two sides, uh, software uh, and hardware. Now, if you look at the trends from uh, the hardware, we actually have a major shift about what is a bottleneck for a modern system. I believe for uh, years, we have seen a database performance being uh, limited by the storage performance, which was quite slow which recently has changed with uh, Fusion IO and uh, other companies making a, a storage very, very fast. Frankly, so fast, it's uh, very hard for uh, MySQL to keep up those days. Uh, at the same time, uh, we see uh, the CPUs, which have been getting faster and faster, are not getting so much faster anymore when you look at the core perspective, right? They become maybe wider with more cores and uh, more power efficient, but cores do not become much faster, and this is uh, uh, requires a lot of software changes, really, to uh, empower us for more uh, high performance and scalable solution. And from my school standpoint, and this is the big software piece we care about here. Uh, I believe there have been a lot of great work done in the recent years, both to scale and adapt to the fast, uh, fast storage, as well as scale with, uh, in multi-core environments when it comes to handling many parallel queries, many parallel transactions. And we as Percona also did a lot of work in Percona server, and uh, I believe from a generally available software, Percona server continues to push the boundaries of performance available mm, for you. Where I believe a lot of work still needs to be done is being able to execute their uh, single query in, uh, uh, in parallel on the multiple cores which are available. This is where MySQL is still uh, uh, needs to be improved a lot. Okay, Robert? Yeah, um, I think that to answer that question, I'd like to look at it from a slightly different perspective. Um, we have a lot of customers who use MySQL in some ways as a, or, um, as a mainframe replacement. And that may sound a little weird, but if you think about what mainframes were meant to do back in the old days, running things like Sabre, for example, these were meant to be highly available, uh, very, very reliable machines that could on offer constant service um, you know, through thick and thin, could deal with maintenance, didn't go down when there were uh, hardware failures. Uh, Tandem did a lot of work on this, obviously. So, uh, we have people that are using MySQL and building very, very large businesses that depend on MySQL offering these same levels of service that, that, uh, that we're accustomed to from mainframes. So I think one of, the, one of the continuing challenges is to push forward and, and offer, for example, high availability models that allow people to operate MySQL in such a way that they can do all the operations, deal with virtually any kind of failures, and still not have to offer downtime, or show downtime to their users. And if you think about the perceptions of a lot of the people that are using MySQL, for example, if you go to Facebook, you don't expect it ever to be down. That's just not something that should happen. And so the models that they, I think one of the big challenges uh, is to take those models and be able to package them up in such a way that everybody can get those benefits. And, and I think that's a really fundamental, uh, another dimension along which we need to scale. Okay, good. Um, so looking forward and talking specifically about infrastructure, what do you see as the biggest required changes in the infrastructure over the next two or three years in order to drive the growth of MySQL? Peter, can you start with that one? Sure. So first, uh, I believe uh, wherever we do the changes to our infrastructure or not, MySQL will continue to uh, to grow, right? It simply cannot be stowed by our complacency with infrastructure. Now, uh, when it comes to the changes, what uh, I see needs to, needs to be done, I believe uh, first is uh, I would really see more uh, embracement of a flash technology, right? And this is not because I'm sitting nearby with you <laughs> guys, right? I seriously, I see so much people still 
confused, they think Flash is unreliable, they think it will lose all their data as soon as they turn off a power, and uh, it's very expensive, right? Even though we have to have a tiny database and what we need is a, a lot of IOPS. A lot of misconceptions here, and uh, really uh, using more Flash can help us to uh, drive performance much, much better. The second uh, thing which I believe is, is the network. I see in the infrastructure uh, one gigabit network connection is still prevailing, and as we're able to store and crunch more and more data in the MySQL servers, we need to be able to move the data faster. Upgrading our uh, data center networks uh, would be another important factor. And a third one, as well as a very basic thing, we see uh, a lot of uh, customers using legacy software and the hardware. For example, uh, how many of you guys are on uh, MySQL 5.6 here already? Well, I would like to see more hands, right? <laughs> because that is how you can get the best, uh, best performance. We also see a lot of people running all the Linux distributions, like three, four years old, which are not able to offer the best performance when it comes to their, uh, the modern hardware. Uh, upgrading those will be quite important. Okay, Robert? Yeah, I think the biggest, perform or biggest improvement that I'm looking for is automation. And I think that, that the previous talk on OpenStack um, was kind of instructive. Uh, if, if you look at OpenStack, it actually has a very, very good approach to automation. The APIs are easy, easy to use. Uh, they're well-formed. They're self-describing. I think there's been really, really great work done there. What I don't see and where I think OpenStack still has, has challenges is to be able to extend that level of automation to databases. So for example, I, I see that if you, if you look at Amazon RDS, they have done really great work in providing automation, but basically over a closed system. Um, we need that level in OpenStack, and we need to make that available to everybody. I think that's a really important um, part of, of growing MySQL in the future. Okay, Nisha? Uh, sure. So I actually agree with both. Um, I think maybe to just to kind of add a little bit, um, uh, you know, the comment about sort of the you know the networking versus the you know uh, CPUs versus the storage and others. It is really important to be able to have sort of balance in the system. And so if you have storage that with Flash, for example, is getting a lot faster, you know, you will be limited in what you can do with it unless the network can keep up, so it is very important to have, you know, kind of the networking technology be able to scale as well as, you know, the, the CPUs and the rest of the system. And um, so one of the things that we look at from a, from a hardware perspective or from an infrastructure perspective is also kind of predictability. Because as, as the latencies of, you know, various forms of hardware go down, you know, the demand that they not only go down, but they go down in a way that's predictable and sustainable. You know, becomes kind of very important because without that, you know, you won't be able to have a predictable single node, and then that imply, you know, impacts your ability to do really good scale out. So I think those are some of the things that you know are you know helpful in, from the infrastructure point of view. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Robert, uh, maybe you can start us off with this one. The uh, release of MySQL 5.6 was a pretty significant development for the MySQL community. Um, how has 5.6 impacted your organization, and how do you see it changing your business going forward? Well, I think there's a, yeah, that's, yeah, two questions. So the first, how did it impact us? Well, at continuing, it caused a complete panic attack. And the reason was that 5.6 changed the bin log. The row format changed. Well, we do clustering. We use replication to do clustering, so it was like, oh my gosh, we need to, we need to adapt to this pretty quickly. Um, so, and the reason we had to adapt was because of the other answer, the answer to the other question is people wanted 5.6. So, uh, and I think that the driving, really, literally the day that, it, that Oracle announced that it was ready to go, we had people among our customer base as well as outside asking, okay, do you support 5.6? Because we want the performance improvements. And I think that's, as, as we look over our customers, I think that's probably the single biggest thing that people point out to us as reasons for moving to 5.6 and uh, you know, asking us for support, which by the way, we, of course, we have had for many months now. Okay, Nisha? 
Yes, um, so I think from kind of the point of view of sort of our customers, you know, um, and I think, you know, all of the improvements that come with every, sub, you know, successive release of MySQL, you know, we are certainly interested in having our customers deploy those as quickly as possible because those are, you know, showcase our devices, they should, you know, improve the customers, you know, TCO and things like that. And so we certainly, you know, try to encourage and help our customers, you know, get onto new releases as quickly as possible. Peter? So uh, from, from my standpoint, the biggest maybe uh, uh, surprise with uh, MySQL 5.6 was what it has been taking the time for uh, people to uh, upgrade uh, to that. And as we uh, started talking to people why we are not rushing to upgrade, let's say, from MySQL 5.5 uh, uh, to 5.6, uh, we found out what uh, it is uh, the case of uh, MySQL being uh, quite mature and MySQL 5.5 was already working uh, well enough for a lot of people. It wasn't the need of a uh, hectic upgrade where you rush to the new release the first week after it goes GA just because you have so painful performance or other kind of problems, so you just need to do that. And uh, I think this uh, maturity of uh, the MySQL technology is, uh, is really the great thing. From, uh, from our standpoint, uh, as a company, we have, uh, continued our uh, innovation and put a lot of work to uh, optimize Perfona and do other enhancements, uh, pushing uh, the boundaries with Perfona Server uh, 5.6, as well as uh, provide the clustering technology with Perfona uh, XLB Cluster 5.6, which is uh, the really valuable uh, high ability technology which we see as increasing choice of many of our customers. Okay, good. So we had uh, Tomas uh, yesterday talking about MySQL 5.7, and uh, Nisha, I think you were just mentioning some some uh, new capabilities that uh, yes uh, that uh, you were expecting to see in 5.7. Um, what, what do each of you see as the most important new features you're anticipating in in MySQL 5.7, and how will they impact your company? Anisha, if you want to go first. Um, well, I think you know, we're certainly kind of very excited about the features that you know we've uh, you know worked with our partners to develop that are rolling out in five seven. I think um, generally, I think anything that improves you know concurrency and things like that tends to be very good for flash devices. You know, even including some of the things that we've done, but also beyond that. And so, so when we do a lot of our benchmarking kind of internally, that is where we see the most improvement is when you know concurrency you know related you know optimizations are made. Okay, Peter. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's uh, it's interesting. We uh, all talk about Oracle and kind of a more uh, less transparent development process, right? But isn't that kind of uh, fun when we get a lot of uh, nice surprises and see how much amazing work we have done when we release so many new stuff for those conferences? I have seen a lot of uh, uh, great surprises with the five uh, five seven. And those come from uh, different angles, right, both uh, technology uh, and not. First, uh, I should mention I am very excited to see how Oracle receives and, uh, and integrates uh, f uh, feedback. I have personally provided some feedback at the MySQL Connect half a year ago, and I see those things are incorporated now in 5.7, as well as some of that even in 5.6 uh, uh, releases, which is wonderful. I also see uh, Oracle is really taking uh, patches from, uh, from a community with, for example, uh, SQL timeout based on Davis patch or contribution from uh, a Fusion IO. And that is uh, great to see uh, Oracle being open really to those uh, inclusion in the uh, community innovations. Now, if you speak about the uh, code in 5.7, there is a lot of great stuff. I think it's pushes the MySQL forward on uh, essentially all dimensions. I really like what I see in the labs release specifically. Their uh, GIS support, like all location searches, is a very important because, frankly, MySQL was very poor when it comes to uh, uh, geographical location searches. And we have seen a lot of uh, people choosing technologies like MongoDB exactly because, because of that. Hopefully, with MySQL 5.7, this trend will change. I'm also very excited about the new changes to have a, a pluggable parser and uh, changes to architecture path, which will uh, hopefully give us much better optimizer and much more control over, uh, over the, the queries which MySQL uh, gets. We have been waiting that, for that for a long time. 
Okay, Robert. Yeah, I would, um, in, in 5.7, I really like Tom, uh, Tomas's talk, and I, you know, as Peter said, I, first of all, I think it's just gratifying that they're putting so much stuff into MySQL. Um, more generally, um, specific features that look great, well, obviously performance. I, I mean, this is just so important to, and uh, you know, hearing about the optimizations for storage, for example, that just really allow MySQL to continue pushing the envelope in terms of high-speed transaction processing. Um, HA features like continuing to improve things like online schema change, I think those are really important uh, so that we, I mean, we write software to help people do rolling upgrades, but you know, wouldn't it be better if you didn't need to do as much of that? You could just do it straight online. I think there's one other thing which I think that is not exactly 5.7, but it's kind of coming at us and I'm really pretty excited about it. And that is, I think there's just a wave of improvements in replication mm. for MySQL. And if you just look across the board, the five, uh, the Tom Ulan's team is continuing to push forward with things like GTIDs, better parallel replication. Um, at the same time, you have MariaDB 10.0 coming out. Christian is doing really great work in terms of parallel res replication using information from block commit. You have Galera, who I think have really done an outstanding job in thinking of different ways of, of applying replication. There's obviously our company, there's many other vendors, uh, people like Facebook, so on and so forth. And I think this is all sort of coming together to create a new series of options for how to build very, very scalable, uh, or very, very uh, large, horizontally scaled systems. Okay. Um. So, uh, Peter, looking out over the next uh, two to three years, what, what changes to the MySQL community do you think would uh, most help the community thrive? What changes to, uh, to MySQL community? Well, uh, I think we have uh, made a long way in the last uh, few years, uh, reducing what uh, I would call uh, hostility towards uh, each other in MySQL ecosystem. And I think that's, uh, that's great. I think we should continue uh, uh, more on that track and uh, be uh, more respectful and uh, uh, caring uh, about each other. Because if you, uh, if you look at that, their uh, newcomers to the community as well as their uh, big enterprise MySQL users, they need to see the strong cohesive community. They don't want to get into this political bickeries, right, and deal with the people with their big personal egos. Right, that's not what we need. Now, at the same time, that doesn't mean uh, we shouldn't have competition. I love how much competition happens there in uh, MySQL community right now. And for a lot of problems, there is not one, but multiple uh, solutions which work very well. It keeps all of us on our uh, toes and really have uh, the My software in the MySQL ecosystem getting better and evolving very rapidly. Having said that, I think uh, there is uh, a kind of ruthless competition where you just paint each other in a you know, bad and spread the fad and there is respectful competition. And I am, believe we need uh, more of a second than as a first one. Okay, good. Robert? Yeah, I think that the, uh, I wouldn't so much change the community as try and just keep moving forward with what we have. And I think that, as Peter says, I, I actually think the, we do have a more respectful community. We do have a really good level of competition. I've, I've said on multiple occasions, I think that's a good thing. It makes us better, it makes better products for you. There's a couple specific problems I'd like to see the community work on. Um, and I think these are things that we need to think about together. The first one is high availability. Uh, Tim Callahan and I have, uh, did a couple talks at this conference, uh, one on MongoDB, we're doing one today on Cassandra, uh, and comparing it with MySQL. One of the things that just pops out when you do this is just how much high availability arrives out of the box when you install Mongo or when you install Cassandra. I think in, in those should inspire us to maybe go back and collectively think about how we can make HA better at, by putting small but important things into MySQL as well as developing tools around it. Um, the second problem that I'd like to invite people to help solve is the integration with Hadoop. I talked about Hadoop at length yesterday in the keynote, and um, this is something that I think that we can solve together. We have ourselves gone over to Apache licensing 
for our tools uh, precisely because we'd like to make them more accessible and give us uh, use a model where we can accept contributions and also contribute to other projects as well. So it would be great to see the community uh, weigh in on that. Okay, Nisha? Yeah, so I think, you know, kind of along the same lines of sort of new directions, this is less about sort of how the community functions and more about some of the problems that could be worth tackling. You know, I'm certainly very interested in seeing kind of how the, the MySQL community kind of debates and considers the in-memory trends that we're seeing. Because we're seeing a lot of, you know, sort of trends of in-memory databases as the uh, transactional world and the analytic world, you know, tend to, you know, merge. And then you try, you know, you're trying to get really, you know, kind of real-time types of anal analytics. So I think that's a very sort of interesting trend. We are certainly personally kind of as a company very, you know, interested in how that goes. We have some opinions, but, um, but I think that's one for the community to sort of consider and see, you know, what positions and what kind of technologies would be worth developing in that space. Okay, good. So we have a little bit of extra time. I usually share the questions with the panel, but uh, since we have a little extra time to fill, I, I'm going to throw out a couple other topics that are kind of timely given the conference. and give you a shot at, uh, at them. Uh, Robert, if you could start with this one. I, you mentioned OpenStack, and we've talked a little bit about that uh, um, here at the conference and uh, during Sean's uh, keynote. Um, how's OpenStack going to impact operating MySQL at scale? What do you see uh, over the next couple of years? In, in, in well, I think it's, I, I, that's a really interesting question. I think that, um, the, and it's not clear. Uh, I, I think that OpenStack has a tremendous amount of promise. Uh, and. If you look at the, if you look at how computing is done, obviously Amazon is is really big in the public cloud, but an awful lot of people do not want to run on an Amazon. There, there are security reasons, there are control reasons, there are actually cost reasons that that make it very important. So I think that OpenStack really does seem like the the way to to get cloud computing widespread in enterprise environments. I think it's very important for that reason. Um, how OpenStack uh, deals with databases is a really interesting question. And I'll just give you one simple um, example. The block storage uh, sender uh, doesn't have provisioned IOPS. This is just a very, very basic capability that's necessary to run databases. So I think there's a lot of work to, to be done in OpenStack to make databases run well. And this is something that, again, we all we need to sort of I think become more involved. Uh, I, certainly, our company needs to become more involved in in helping in that in that effort. Okay, Nisha. Yeah, so I think you know regarding OpenStack. I mean, I, I I definitely agree. So I mean, OpenStack has a great deal of potential. You know, what we what we see across our customer base is a lot of excitement about it, but there are still you know, a number of unanswered questions. There's lots of people who are trying it. They're running into sometimes issues, sometimes you know things that they like to see better. But I think it would benefit certainly you know the community and at least our customer base as a whole to see a lot more you know. Thinking done and a lot more improvements done to make you know operating OpenStack a practical reality for a lot of people. Okay, and Peter. Yeah. Well, I believe that OpenStack is obviously uh, a relatively new technology and it has a, a, a long way to go, but it has a great momentum and uh, and great uh, great potential. I think it also. Uh, place very well with the open source community because, well, uh, frankly, uh, we guys like open source, right? I mean, uh, for this community specifically, we uh, tend to choose their uh, open source solutions if they are uh, if they are good enough. I have seen that countless uh, countless times with in the MySQL ecosystem, and uh, uh, that is uh, exactly what uh, OpenStack uh, provides. Now, uh, how I think it impacts us, and uh, what is interesting uh, for us specifically is, uh, you mentioned their uh, block storage uh, problem, right? But this is only one way of uh, running uh, databases in the cloud. Another one is uh, uh, having it uh, talking to their uh, local storage, which can be high performance flash storage, for example, and having their uh, replication as we see the, uh, for example, synchronous replication as, as Galera technology provides and as we feature in Perconix Ruby cluster technology. Uh, we see that is a, a very good choice, uh, specifically running in OpenStack because high ability through uh, the block uh, level storage is not uh, quite mature yet. 
Okay, good. And then uh, another very topical issue, and Peter, maybe you can start us off with this one, is uh, we had the announcement of WebScale SQL uh -huh. here in the last week or so. Uh, kind of a very interesting combination of uh, folks participating in that with Facebook, Google, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, what, what do you think the impact's going to be on, uh, on MySQL and on the, on the community? Oh, uh, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, I think this is a, uh, great what we have uh, the, uh, those uh, companies, which can be seen as competitors sometimes, uh, coming together and uh, putting their engineering resources to push their uh, MySQL uh, moving forward, especially in the high-end environments. And I think this is very valuable because as, uh, as we see from a driving uh, the products forward, the closer you are to your co customers, the more uh, you can innovate and see exact problems, right? So for example, uh, especially for those larger companies, right, uh, uh, we or guys at Oracle or uh, MariaDB wouldn't have such hands-on access to the system to absorb the problems in the, plow, uh, in, the, in the wild, able to implement patches quickly and so on and so forth. I think that will really drive innovation forward uh, very quickly. I also am very excited about a couple of things. First, if you think about that, uh, this is uh, really the uh, like very cohesive group of development. Those guys, even though they work for different companies right now, many of them are friends and have been working together on the same problem for a long time. So it's not just superficial kind of as business slash marketing level uh, announcements where multiple kind of teams which don't work, want to work together are forced to do so. I believe there is a lot of this really engineering goodwill if guys really want to work together and push things forward which is uh, really important. And the last thing, I think this really adds a very important voice to their uh, MySQL uh, ecosystem. Uh, the WebScale SQL, unlike Kirkona, MariaDB, or Oracle, is vendor neutral, right? Those guys, they don't have uh, some MySQL support or services, right, or subscription to sell you. Mm -hmm. And that uh, really uh, adds a very special flavor to the innovation they're going to pursue. Okay, good. Robert? I, I would agree completely with Peter. I think it's great. So I'm looking forward to working with them. Okay. Nisha? Yeah, same. I think it's you know great, and just to kind of echo um, you know a point that Peter made, which is I mean, the the folks there have they have so much hands-on experience of you know running SQL at tremendous scale and being able to you know extract efficiencies, and I think they're you know putting that together is is very valuable. Okay. Okay, so just to uh, wrap up, Nisha, maybe you could uh, start um, start us off. W what are the top two or three points our audience sh should take away from this panel about operating MySQL at scale? So um, I think uh, you know a number of different things. I mean, I think s scale is you know about a number of things. You know, one of them is it's about efficiency, you know, and it's about predictability, and then it's about management. And so you really want efficient when you're operating at scale. You know, efficiencies that you get at a single node level translate into real co you know cost efficiencies at the data center level. The other is that if you, you know, if you are not predictable at a single node level, then you have loss of efficiency at the data center level. And then the third is that if you can't manage in a way that scales, you know, and, and a way that is cost effective at scale, then you'll have a, lot, a large problem. So you know, any tech technologies that come to those three benefits then tend to help operations at scale. OK, good. Peter? Yeah, well, uh, I see the following way. Uh, their uh, hardware gets uh, get better and it continues to get, uh, get better. That is uh, absolutely great, allowing us to get more out of a single node or their uh, networks, right, uh, multiple uh, nodes. The software is improving uh, also as well, both in terms of scaling uh, systems as well as uh, scaling people. Robert here mentioned the automation, then that is uh, critically important because uh, in our environment, it's very hard to uh, find the qualified uh, DBA or generally ops people. And we are all tasked to manage more and more servers, right, for per single employee. So in improvement in the uh, automation with cloud technologies uh, orchestration where is, uh, is absolutely great. And the other outcome for me is their uh, 
the MySQL uh, maturity, really. I think it's very great to see what uh, uh, the MySQL has already proved itself. We have seen the companies like Facebook, like uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, have been running MySQL on an extreme scale for five, uh, 10 years. So uh, what that means, it is a very safe choice. You, you have, can already follow somebody else's footsteps to be the extremely scalable and efficient architectures. Okay, Robert? Yeah, I wanna just pick up on Peter's point about updating, upgrading to new versions. I mean, the, the improvements in MySQL are very, very impressive over the last couple of releases. And I think you need to, to look at them carefully and not be afraid to upgrade. I see a lot of people dealing with problems right now in MySQL 5.5, for example, that are actually solved in, mm. in later releases. And I think, I think that folks are causing themselves unnecessary pain by not, by not taking that step. Also, as Peter said, and as I think we've all said, automation is just critical. The, um, this is the cloud is driven by automation. And, and there are emerging technologies to automate uh, MySQL better. There are technologies that already exist. There are clear choices between them, and I think you need to look at those technologies and really uh, pick things that, that do help you um, scale your organization so that you can do more things, stay up uh, more effectively um, with less labor. And then finally, I think, uh, to return to something that's slightly outside of MySQL, if you're operating at scale, and by this I mean having a lot of data, I think Hadoop is probably in your future. And this is a bit of a change for us. MySQL has operated as a silo for a long time in many large systems. And we finally got kind of a Borg here that we're beginning to have to think that we have to assimilate to. So I think that's something that you want to be looking at, figuring out how you're going to do that. Okay, good. Well, thanks panel. Um, if everybody could give uh, our panelists a round of uh, applause. Mm -hmm. And uh, I invite you all to uh, take a break in the exhibit hall. The first round of breakout sessions will start at 11.10 this morning. Thank you. Thank you.